Greetings, denizens of YouTube! This is the first episode of a new series where I analyze some of my favorite games and talk about why they're special to me. I'm keeping these videos spoiler free, so if you haven't played, let me tell you why you should. Today's episode is about Thief the Dark Project. If you haven't heard of it, that's probably because it was released in 1998, one of the most competitive years in video game history, one month after Half-Life and only a week after Ocarina of Time. That holiday season, those two titans dominated the PC and console markets respectively, so these thief trapezoids kept the shelves warm at your local EB Games. It reviewed well, but you could say that Thief snuck past the general gaming audience. <laughs> So many people missed out on a game bursting with new ideas and tremendous depth in favor of games that were plenty innovative but a whole lot safer. Quake was riding high as the preferred genocide simulator, and Zelda had a reputation for setting the goddamn world on fire, so ideas like an FPS game that isn't a Doom clone, and Zelda in 3D, were much easier to sell than a game where you're not even supposed to kill anybody. You see, stealth games hadn't really caught on yet. 1998 also saw the release of Tenchu Stealth Assassins and Metal Gear Solid, both of which encourage stealthy play, but those games fell back on more easily digestible elements to help drive sales. In Tenchu, you play as a ninja who jumps from rooftops and cuts people in half. And Metal Gear featured a giant anime robot death machine, a helicopter that you blow up with a rocket launcher, gratuitous fan service, a fourth wall breaking psychic, Oh, so you've played Super Smash Bros. Melee before? and a ninja who cuts people in half. You couldn't complete either game non-lethally, and there were still boss fights, a relic of old-school design philosophy that doesn't belong in a stealth game. Thief was something entirely new, and it set the standard for what a stealth game could be in a 3D space. It's no longer just about avoiding the obvious blue vision cone. The player has to be conscious of how bright or dark a given area is, as well as how much noise their footsteps make when walking on various surfaces. If your light indicator looks like this, guards can see you from far away. But if you're creeping around in the dark, someone can get right up in your grill before turning around and saying, Oh well. Must earn nothing. Walk on a wooden or carpeted floor and you can slip right past a guard when their back is turned. But walk on metal grating or marble floor and everyone in a mile radius will come to check it out. Who'd I hear there? The player can manipulate the environment to their advantage by putting out torches and covering noisy floors with Nickelodeon slime to dampen their footsteps. That doesn't even scratch the surface of what can be done in Thief, but it's enough to get through the first mission or two. The sheer scope of this game's possibility space will dawn on you around the time you obtain your first rope arrow. Pair that with open-ended level design, and the player has a staggering amount of options for how they navigate each level, even some that the developers might not have intended. But the levels aren't just fun to play. Looking Glass Studios went a step further by making those levels believable spaces. World building is one of Thief's greatest strengths. In most other games, when you play through a level, you'll realize that it's just that. A level. A gauntlet designed for the player character's specific skill set, and nothing more. Bowser's Castle isn't designed to keep Mario out, it's designed to be a challenge for the player. But world building was never a priority in the Super Mario series, so our hero just waltzes in through the front door and gets Princess Peach back every time. Let's compare that to the first mission of Thief, where the player character Garrett has to infiltrate Lord Bafford's manor to steal his prized scepter. Same basic setup, but Lord Bafford doesn't want Garrett getting in. We start outside the mansion, get a good look at the front door, and we know that's not gonna happen. Garrett doesn't stand a chance against this many guards in combat, and the door doesn't even open from the outside. So, we have to get a little dirty. That's right, aside from the tutorial, the first thing you do in this game is swim in sewage. You can use this hatch to access the sewer, but I always just jump down the toilet because it's hilarious. It isn't heroic, it isn't dignified, but it's a way in. The levels in Thief aren't made just for Garrett, they're actual places with sensible layouts containing people who are more than just obstacles. Guards talk politics, these people are gambling, and this guy's asleep. Maybe that all seems obvious, but games were not like this in 1998. Just look at Half-Life. This room makes zero sense, and here we have bad guys waiting inside of a box for the player to arrive before jumping out and shooting them. 
Now, Thief isn't realistic or anything, far from it. But realism isn't all that important for player immersion, and it rarely makes a game more enjoyable. If people actually wanted realism in their games, Desert Bus would have gotten a reboot by now. Which brings me to exploration. First off, the levels are enormous, but what's important is that none of that space is wasted. As the old adage goes, it's not about the size, it's what you do with it that counts. Nothing was thrown in just for the sake of it, it all serves a purpose. Each area is loaded with environmental storytelling, and there are secrets all over the place. You're not meant to find all of them, but there are enough scattered around so that every player will uncover a few well-hidden items or areas. This is important, because the joy of discovery is a core part of the Thief experience, whether you realize it or not. There are several missions that have hardly any stealth gameplay at all, and they're superb because the exploration is engaging enough to pick up the slack. Many fans would disagree, instead arguing that those unconventional missions were an oversight and nothing more. I can't argue with their opinion, but I maintain that those levels capture the spirit of Thief, and the greater variety in mission types makes for a more surprising experience. There's so much to love about this game. It's got a unique, well-rounded stealth system, level design and mechanics that let you play your own way, a cohesive world full of environmental storytelling, and a whole lot to explore. If you've never played this game before, and anything I've said about it sounds fun or interesting, I urge you to give it a try. Thief Gold only costs 7 bucks on Steam. Just make sure that you download the fan-made patch so the game runs properly. And the HD texture pack is also nice. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time.